34. didn't work the first time. See page loads, I click on that, nothing. Click on it again, and it's visible. Click on it again. So I got some something in there. It isn't quite kosher. But in essence, it works. Is that that double equals sign? Or? No. Let's review what I'm doing here. I guess I could do. I could make my life easier and just always display it, get rid of the stupid if statement. So I don't, I can't go and hide it then, but I guess. So what do I have? I have an on-click event on that LI that says when I click on this, call the function toggle menu and display the menu to. Okay? Now what does that do? It calls that function and it passes it an argument of two. I have code in here that says that if this display is none or that's what the pipes mean, the two pipes mean or. There is no display value, which apparently for some reason it shows up not as a display of none the first time through. I'm not sure why that is, but it does. If there's no display defined for it, then it's going to set the display of that div, or not that div, but that li that I passed to it, it's going to set it to um, block. Otherwise, it's going to set it back to none. So if it's visible and the display is block, it's going to make it display of none. If it's anything else, it's going to make it invisible. So it's a nice little toggle switch where as I go and I click on that, oops, I can show and hide it. Then I could do that for each of these submenus too. So like for that one, I can go in and code it to show the other menu. Which is a better solution? I don't know. Um, I, and we could easily take this and style it to look better on a mobile device by making it by making them look like buttons, making them extend all the way across, whatever. All right, we could go and do that. Um, one thing that's tough about this class is we do talk a little bit about JavaScript. Um, 
you should be a comfortable enough with JavaScript to understand the basics of how you can tie events to it and set attributes on different things. Like in this case, I'm setting the visibility attribute, uh, or not the visibility, but the display type attribute of the uh, of the uh, unordered list based on whether they've clicked it or not. So whenever we look at specific examples like this, I want to make sure you know that it's not just a specific example that we have a grasp on. That we have sort of a, a grasp on, on um, the bigger picture. What's the bigger picture here? The first part of the bigger picture, I think, is making sure that your design makes sense in a mobile environment. Don't try to shoehorn what would be a great desktop design and, and figure out a way to tweak it to work in a mobile environment because that's kind of going to be a, a problem. You want your mobile to have a good mobile design. You want your desktop to have a good desktop design. Second thing I would say is try to accomplish things in a simple manner. In other words, and that, that's tough to do, and I know you probably you said you mentioned about moving code between the mobile style sheet and the, um, and the, the desktop style sheet. Really, it would seem to me that some code needs to be in both places, right? You have to think about what code you want where. In other words, the code that you want in the common style sheet is the code that's simply going to make the link display and not display. So that's the functionality you want everyone to have. So that should be code that's in the base style sheet. The specific code that, that deals with the positioning of the element, that needs to be in the desktop because on the mobile device, we're going to try to keep things simple here and simply have these things display right underneath each other. All right, We don't want to do anything with positioning. We want sort of the natural positioning to take effect, if that makes any sense. I do notice this in uh, sometimes in the 216 class that I teach too, the intro to web development, that uh, there are times when people try to micromanage the CSS code and try to put a lot of CSS code in control. Remember, the browser is very good at doing some things. The browser is very good at simply like ordering one thing on top of each other. You know, you shouldn't have to code much to get the browser to stack things on top of each other because that's what the browser wants to do with block tags anyhow. All right. So in that case, it's likely going to be that you don't need as much CSS to do it that you know to write a, something a little bit simpler and really control just the part of it that you want to control for this. Questions about this and about what we have? Um, could, could we try to take uh, this and drag it into the emulator just to... Yeah, sure. Here's what I just did on the emulator. Can make the thing hide and show. I don't have any styling for it because I took all that styling out. And here's this one in the emulator. Doing that because the mouse acts differently in that in that mode. No, that's that's yeah, that kind of what I expected to be honest. Yeah, the, the physical pressing to, to trigger that. That's uh, that, that's that's actually good. Okay, I will zip up and post these examples. I'm debating about posting the video because I'm not sure if the video really would be meaningful or not because you know there's a lot of you know it, it's less of a lecture and it was more of a discussion and I don't know if the video gets captured well for a discussion maybe I'll maybe I'll look at it and see if, if I if that makes sense or not to do but then I mean how, how do I want to say
say this. Um, I think it's great to bring these kinds of questions to class. You, know, you asked the question, and we were talking a little bit about it beforehand, and it was kind of like, well, let's talk about this today. So I do welcome that because, um, you know, um, all this stuff is relevant. And, and going beyond simply what I talk about to try to incorporate other stuff you've seen and all that is, is a great way to learn this stuff. So um, I'll, I'll be glad to go over uh, these things to, to the degree that time allows. And I, I think this is a good, good use of our time today. Other questions? Did you have this in a video? Did you have it like in a video query or no? Like this? Yeah. The, he does have it. Okay, okay. I just missed that. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, in other words, he has a base style sheet that, right. that everyone gets. Then right. he has a media query for stuff if it's a bigger screen. And really, I think that the, the, the answer will be to take and move some of the code from your start to to your biggie. I think the code that relates to positioning no secondary uh, um, the secondary um, LIs I think needs to be in the big one and the code that shows and hides it which is just that hover and, and some of the base CSS code for that needs to be in the start too. Alrighty. Questions? Um, obviously, I know that with the, the, the first example that you, you modified, obviously, uh, I would obviously have to make a few little tweaks to the, the, the large version. But could I, could I see that uh, the original trial two, excuse me, the, <coughs> the one you did with the, uh, could I see that in, in the desktop size? Just to Which see? one? Uh, I believe the, the trial two one there. Yeah. The one this one? You, yeah, the one where you hey, gave us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I broke this code because I, I just got rid no, of that that's, that's code. That's what I expected. That code should have been moved to the to the full version of the stat sheet. Yeah. I just lopped it off. That was, no, that's just, that was my question. What was your question? My question was, was how is it going to look? And when I asked him if it's on a video query, how is it going to look? On the full, you know, full, but it's it's opposite. He's, it's yeah. It'll look. Ba it should look the way it looked originally. In his, yeah. His large. In other words, in other words, I deleted code that I should have moved to the full style right. sheet. Right. And we could even recreate that if you want. Let's just rename this guy in case something goes. was already in Biggie. It was in start. It was in start. website, then you gotta you gotta play the, the cards that you've been dealt, in other words. 
and you might create CSS that does media queries to get rid of stuff. If you're doing things from scratch, I would suggest to start with the mobile only and then think of things to enhance. But the way, okay, which, so I already submitted it, but the way I, the way I think is like I always, I designed it that way for what I submitted for the homework, but the way I structured it was the opposite, because I always think of starting from, you know, a desktop and then moving down, even though I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, you'll see. Either way, you can end up at the same place. Yeah, I designed it this way, but I, I structured it that way. That's I, I don't understand when you say you designed it this way and structured it I started it, it and, I built, and I started it like as a mobile first idea of like a, what it would look for good mobile and then wanted to like add things to it. But I, just the way I ordered, just the way I put the media query in, it starts with the large and then, and then moves down to the, so that's, that's wrong. I would suggest if you're going to design it that way, you code it that way. Yeah. Essentially, what you're saying is you planned it one way and then threw your plan out the window and coded well, it. Well, no, I just way. structured the media query. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would do it. It's easy to redo. Yeah, I, no need, no need to. But yeah, you ask my opinion. And, no, no, and you're right. Yeah, I, I just realized that. I mean, yeah. All right. Other questions? Anyone staying for lamb? All right, um, if you want to head down there, I'll get this.